Okay, so yet another snowy day in Colorado. I thought that we were completely done with this, but not quite yet. So I'm gonna come out here and show you guys the, the trailer, just a little bit of progress update. So you can see what that looks like right now. And let's uh, get in here, punch in my top secret code to the door. And here we are. All right, so we're in the workshop right now, and this is the trailer that we're currently working on right now. So uh, you can see there's a, oh yeah, we haven't done an update on that, but that loft is completely built now. I'll give you a little sneak peek here of what that looks like, but uh, I'll be continuing this on another video, but we got the toilet in there, toilet's ready to go. And uh, if we come all the way up these stairs, TV's gonna go up there, kind of have a couch and a lounge kind of starting to come along up there. So, um, anyways, this is about this trailer right here. I've got a few odds and ends out here that have been delivered for the shower and the battery system, which is gonna be uh, uh, going in here. So, that's all waiting to. All right, so the trailer is gonna look real nice, I think, with a lift kit. So one of those boxes I was showing you up front actually has a lift kit in it. So that's gonna uh, give us a few more inches. I'm thinking maybe four, five, six inches or something like that, and then replace these tires here with something a little bit beefier. And I think that's gonna give it a real nice uh, look on there. So, yep, uh, a ladder in the back here that goes up to the roof still thinking about doing that and uh, figuring that out and a roof rack so and if we come around here let's turn the light on find the switch for that right there okay so this is what we got so far in here we got kind of like a little outline of where everything is going to go so up here is going to be um the cabinets above the kitchen and then the kitchen area is going to be here so that's a counter counter height right there and then a stove sink over here you got a refrigerator and this is actually kind of nice it's called everchill i got this from uh, i think rec pro but it's got a separate freezer and a fridge down here and it's about comes up to about yay high so hopefully you can see that to kind of give you a, an idea of how tall that is okay so that goes right there and then there's going to be cabinetry that goes around it so it's going to look like a residential type situation where the refrigerator kind of slides into the cabinets so that's what that's going to look like over there and it's just taller than the countertop that's going to be over here or by the time we're done building it out it may actually be no, it'll still be lower, so just ever so slightly though. So that's what that looks like. Over here on the front of the trailer or in the front or at the front of the trailer, um, this will be the bathroom section over here. So bathroom section on this side, um, on this side here is gonna be utilities as in uh, the actual electrical system. So I'm thinking batteries down here and some of the storage system. Uh, for the inverter or whatever else not everything is just going to be all lined up on this side So it's all contained on one end of the of the vehicle. So um, Over here you'll go into the shower and then this whole section over here is going to be a wet bath So it'll be complete it's, so it's going to be completely waterproof, right? So uh, We're going to do the walls in a waterproof uh, lining same thing with the floor so instead of just doing uh, a shower pan which was the so instead of just doing a shower pan which was the original idea we're just going to completely waterproof this whole section over here I figured that's going to give it a better look and more utility and actually give us more room because by the time you try to uh, engineer a shower pan into this area right here it was just it was making the tolerances too tight, you know, like trying to figure out, okay, now where do I put the toilet uh, and everything else? So that wasn't gonna work out so well. So just decided to 
make the whole section or the whole front section waterproof. So uh, pretty big area in here. If anybody's seen a Vino's trailer, uh, that's a pretty legitimate amount of room in there. So I think that's going to look really nice. And then uh, out here in the back, still working on deciding how to do the bed up and down or just do a bed on this side that is also a bench and then it pulls out into a queen size bed that kind of situation i think that's going to be a whole lot simpler but we're not necessarily trying to go simpler so we're just trying to do whatever makes the most sense back here so may end up doing that or doing the bed that comes down from the ceiling and still leave enough room which is the whole purpose here leave enough room over here so that you can fit a standard uh, atv you know this is actually quite a lot of room back here so you should be able to fit one uh, up to the fridge here no problem and then of course from the back to the front the length is not the problem the width is what would be a problem here so trying to figure that out and I um, think that's an update for right now um, the door okay yeah I guess the door situation is still pending we thought about doing a pocket door so that it slides out of the way or just trying to do some kind of accordion style door uh, on here. So that's still also pending to uh, uh, pending some engineering to see how that turns out. So uh, that is the update so far on this trailer. And uh, I also have some um, uh, gear that's come out here, which is the lift kit and a bunch of other stuff out here so this is going to be for the solar the pass through from the roof all right into the vehicle itself for the solar panels so that's about it and that's the update on the front of this trailer here so hopefully we'll have a little bit more work done in a couple of weeks here kind of give you guys an update i'm very visual so when i talk about things i'm just like a bunch of people probably still aren't understanding this so i want to see it actually kind of start to take shape and hence the reason why we kind of did this outline because it kind of helps me at least even remotely figure out what that might look like so just stay tuned and uh i'll get you more updates as soon as we got them this has been the primary project that we've been working on to try to get this out of the way and so we got a little bit more room here to work in i'm looking into getting an hq19 hq17 black series camper as well um, I've always been interested in those and kind of seeing how those operate. So I uh, will need the space right here to, to put that in here. So um, I think that's about it for right now. Stay tuned. I'll update you guys as I have more information. And if you're interested in this trailer, like I said uh, in my other video on the van, if you're interested in this and you've got ideas of how you want it built out, this is a good time to say, hey, I want the trailer. Maybe if we could adjust this and build it like this, I'd be interested. You're more than welcome to do that. Otherwise, as usual, we're going to continue building this the best way we think or we know how. And uh, as soon as it's done, it's available for whoever wants to buy it. But And then, of course, this door here already got a window that goes on here so that you can have a kind of like an escape window that's going to go right here. So that's another part of uh, this build that's going to be interesting is trying to figure out how to cut this hole and what it actually looks like back here. may have to reframe it and do some welding after that cut out. And then uh, that reminds me as well, above the, we talked about this is the counter area right here. And uh, the stove top and the sink is going to be right there. And over here in this section underneath the cabinet is going to be a window, like a real big window right here. Um, so that when you're cooking, you can actually look out off that um, area right there and just kind of see that. Same thing, well, the back area, because we still want to maintain that as a ramp, I don't think we're going to be able to do a window back there, much as I would prefer to have that back there, so you kind of have some visibility out that way. I think having cues like that is what transforms this from a cargo trailer into more like an RV type situation. So I like windows. I want to have as many windows as possible while also keeping in mind that the more windows you have, the more, um, uh, the harder it is to keep any kind of regulation of temperature in here, especially in the winter months is my concern. So um, probably more windows on this side, perhaps, um, to kind of uh, 
bring that natural light in as well. All right, so as far as the battery system is concerned, that's gonna go over there. I got this um, system from bigbattery.com and this is not a commercial for Big Battery, by the way, I bought this with my own money. I am not sponsored by anybody. So, I have never used Big Battery before, but it seemed like a good system, so I went ahead and got that. Along with that, I got this 2000 kilowatt um, pure sine wave inverter and charger, right? So it's gonna be able to charge my battery system as well as convert the 12 volt to 120 volt AC. So we're gonna open this up. Of course, it's always hard to do with one hand here. So I'm gonna to try to put you guys down in a spot where I feel like you can still see the action, which I think is gonna be up here. So, all right. This is pretty heavy, but this is the battery system right here. Uh, I'll zoom you guys in in a little bit as soon as I got it all opened up. That's what that is. That. And I think that's all that comes in the box. Some barcodes here. Uh, I'll try not to lose that actually, just in case it's, a, it's important. But nothing else in the box. All right. So that's the battery, and then this is going to be the inverter, okay, so global LF series, pure sine wave inverter, pure sine wave inverter, charges manual or uses manual, that's that. Down. Here's the box information, pure sine wave inverter, aims power, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. System. I'll bring you guys in closer here in a second. So. Right. Okay, so here's what we have now uh, Global LF Series 12 volt inverter charger. And uh, here's some of the particulars for all you electricians out there or those that are interested. You can pause the video and check that out. And that's what that looks like right there. It comes with your outlets already on the system, so that's kind of nice. And uh, there's the back part of it. And the other side. Okay. And then there's the back end. and there for cooling and that's about it. So this here is your battery system. These cables are gonna plug into that. So let's try to turn it on, yeah? It's on while charging, so 13 volts. So this has got a full charge just right out of the box. And uh, bigbattery.com is a website where I got that from, not sponsored again. Uh, so I have never used this system before, so I don't know how well it's going to work or what it's all about, but I've seen some reviews on it, and um, they spoke highly of it, so we're going to go with it. So over here is going to be the connection where this part goes into it, kind of like so, and then these leads here, of course, go to the inverter charger system, and then uh, solar will come in from the roof and connect to that. So what we're going to do with this system here is put it in that section right over there and 
kind of like so. There's more than enough room. And you can actually connect a whole bunch of these up together. So if you decided to buy another one, you can do that. This one here is 170 watt hours, I believe. Let's see if we can zoom in on the label, see if that's on there. So this is 175 amps. So yeah, about 170 amp hours for this battery system right here, I believe is how it's rated on the website. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. So you can actually put a couple of these side by side and daisy chain them together. So there's enough room here for another system and you could always stack them too, I bet, if you really needed even more power. So that's kind of nice. As far as the inverter is concerned, the idea is going to be to mount it probably up against the wall right here. So looks like it has to be mounted from the bottom here. So we'll either have to mount it on this wall, kind of right there, or um, on the floor and then move the battery down a little bit more because we still have this little section over here as well where I think this battery would also be able to sit. So, mm, nope, it's just a little bit bigger than that section over there. So the battery does have to go right here. And we can turn that off actually. So the battery has to go here and the inverter will have to go. We can put a shelf up here as well and then put the inverter on the shelf on top of the batteries. And I think that's gonna be the better way of doing this. Um, since that's quite heavy, I don't think mounting it just on the wall is going to be conducive to it actually staying there. So if it's at least framed out a little bit sturdier than this wall in the trailer is, frame this out and then put the inverter on top. And all this is going to be mounted on a drawer system that's actually going to slide out. So the batteries will be able to slide out as well as the inverter. So in case you wanted to do servicing or any of that kind of stuff, you could do that. So that is the inverter system and all right and as for the dimensions of this battery system you got at the top here about seven and a half inches and the length from the front to the back is about 10 inches and the height of the battery is 13 and a half almost 13 and a half inches and then as far as the inverter system at its longest it's 15 and let's see here 15 and 3 eighths and how tall is it that's six and a quarter Yep, it's about six and a quarter. So that's what that looks like. And this whole section that we've created here is about what, 12 inches. So there's gonna to be tons of room over here to fit that in there. Okay. okay. The measurements here for this fridge, it's about what, 19, 19 inches wide. And length front to back is about 20 inches. And it is about 43 and a half inches tall. Okay. So that's gonna work out perfectly here. So that is what we have so far. All right, now over here, we've got the pet forward toilet system here. It's a uh, cassette toilet C400 series and just got it out of the box so feels good good construction comes with everything that you will need to get it all set up there's a cassette system and we'll do a little uh, review or whatever or I'll show it to you guys after it's all unpackaged here in some upcoming videos but Right now, I just want to show you guys where it's going to go in this section right here. And I believe this is going to fit 
right there. And this is where the cassette is gonna come out. So that's a cassette area right there that's gonna come out of this wall. So we'll have to make a hole right there, but for that seat is gonna go right there. And I'm about six foot. So I'm gonna sit on it here real quick, kind of show you guys what that's gonna look like. Excuse my attire, it's kind of crazy outside, crazy snow outside, but this is what it looks like, kind of sitting in here. So I think tons of room, well not tons of room, but ample, an ample amount of room in this section right here to be able to sit down and do what you've got to do without being cramped up. And where the camera is right now is where the shower system is going to be. So, um, so that's what that's going to look like. And I think there's going to be ample room for you to be sitting down in that area right there uh, doing your business. So show you the view from the side here. That's what that looks like. That's good. I like it. Okay, now over here, this is gonna be the kitchen counter area, right? And then underneath that, um, we're gonna put this water system or this water tank right here. And I believe this is a 26 gallon, if memory serves correctly, but here are the part numbers for the water tank kit. And this all comes in the box right here. So this is all one kit. Just kind of like that and if you're buying these things be careful because some of them actually don't come with these fittings in them and you're actually gonna have to drill your own holes and uh, try to uh, and thread those in so I like the fact that this actually comes with it all kind of connected up and you can kind of choose where you're gonna want to have your uh, actual pipes running through there's one two three sections over there and I think that's a breather over there on that corner so or actually not a breather, but a drain um, area for that. So this may actually need to sit the other way around. So flip that around like so, and this is gonna be the orientation of this tank right here. So That's good. So more than enough room underneath the sink on that, but that's more to come on that. But that is the kit for that tank. And it looks like a W1155 uh, 9.24 M6. I don't know what that is, but maybe a model number. But that's where that tank goes. And I'll do a video where I kind of catalog all this information for you in case somebody's following along and trying to buy the same things. But do your own research and try to find what works for you. But so far, for what we got going on here, I think this is gonna be the setup. So, got the water system right there, um, toilet system over there, and by, uh, batteries and electrical system on this side right here. And it's starting to, to look real nice. And a lot of these components, I know you can make your own water tanks and do all this kind of stuff, and that toilet system is not cheap. I think that was like $700 just by itself. So. And the battery system is a little bit over, what, maybe, uh, I don't want to say now because I'm forgetting, but it's over $1,000, right? $1,500, $1,800 or something like that for that, I think. And then um, you can do a whole lot of this stuff cheaper. So this is not the oh, end all be all, but this is just how we are building this. And I don't want that taken away from people who are doing this cheaper or on a budget or whatever else not, but not the intention of this. The idea was to go out there and kind of build it out of what I think are good components and see what that looks like at the end, you know. That way next time I'm complaining about somebody, you know, one of these RVs, I can look back and say, well, when I built it, there's a reason why they maybe do it like that because the components are lighter or whatever else not. But um, so far, just building it the best way we know how using components that we think are uh, high quality. So that's about it for right now. And uh, catch up with you guys later. Peace.